Okay, I'm in 1770 Queensland, which is right along the coast. So I'm on the Pacific Ocean. Uh, 1770, I believe, is where Captain Cook landed uh, here on Australia the first time. And I'm staying by Angus Waters, or Angus Water, I think it's called, right now. And just taking a kind of a decompression day. It's been pretty busy. So this video is broken down into two visits and I just want to put some parameters around them or some caveats or maybe some descriptions, maybe a better way to do it. Um, so there's kind of two stops I had. So Tamara was where I went to very first, just uh, kind of south of Miles, uh, Queensland, and uh, they have cotton and then grow like sorghum or uh, they're growing some mung beans right now and it all kind of depends on weather and rotation and different things. Um, uh, water is a big one. And uh, they had a, uh, a pivot of cotton that I was able to look at. It was very green still. It was just starting to flower, pollinate and start making a little cotton bowl. So you'll see that in this little clump of video uh, that I have. I got a little bit of drone footage of flying over the pivot and uh, I try to put some description around it. You will see one part in the video where there's a really big like reservoir uh, where they have water and uh, you can see it's very empty and they got some rain. Uh, she wasn't sure if they got enough rain yet to start pumping. Uh, the very interesting thing what they do here is they capture all the overland runoff. So on their farm they have it all sloped to go to the very bottom portion of their property and then from there they pump it all the way back up to uh, the reservoir and they run pivots and so you can see that in the video coming up uh, where they pivot irrigate so uh, very interesting to talk to them a lot of their uh, struggles to be honest is water and if they have yield yield kind of just looks after everything so uh, really interesting to talk to her about uh, what they do there and I stayed there for, I guess it was uh, two nights? Two nights. This clump of video is uh, Tamara's and this is just kind of her giving me a bit of a tour of their farm and what things look like around there. And when it was dry, this would be dry or was it? Was it... Well, I suppose when it when there's an opportunity to fill it, it's full. <laughs> and I suppose the plan of storing water is so that when it's dry, there's a little bit in here. Yes. <laughs> Consistent, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, sporadic.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed Tamaris. Now this is, uh, uh, next one is Ben. Uh, he farms with his wife and brother, so Kate and Sam. And they, they're they pretty large. They're a large, they would say broad acreage, uh, what we would call grain and oil seeds, they, they call broad acreage. And uh, very much similar to what they do, but instead of pivot irrigation, they do flood irrigation. And they have the same thing, and you'll see it in this video too, where they have a really, really, really massive reservoir for moisture. Same thing, they collect a whole bunch of moisture, get to a, a central location, and then they pump it um, from that location up into the reservoir. What they do is they do flood irrigation. Um, sometimes it's siphon. And siphon is basically, you put a hose down into the reservoir, you kind of go like this, and then you drop it down, and water flows out of it, out of the canal that supplies the siphons. They also have some stuff where they just kind of flood irrigate, where they kind of uh, have st st um, steps along the way, and then they flood it, and it, it's all sloped to go one way. So very, very flat fields um, with that, slight grade to do flood irrigation. Um, they don't grow, uh, Ben and his family don't grow any cotton. They're just basically like chickpeas, uh, wheat, sorghum, uh, all that kind of stuff. And they can, they like, uh, and I'm, I didn't think I mentioned this in Tamaris, but they can do like a winter crop and a summer crop because uh, their growing season's fairly long. Uh, but what uh, Ben was saying is that they have close to 200, and 50,000 head of cattle in the area that are on feedlot. So most of the stuff that he produces all ends up in it going as cattle feed. But uh, some of the fields there were, you'll see uh, were, were huge. So uh, basically Ben was really gracious to spend some time with me talking about my nut field topic and then took me around for a tour of the farm. So this little bit of clips is uh, Ben uh, Kate and Sam's place and this is kind of their gear and what it looks like around their place. So hopefully you enjoy Absolutely not. Is it off a chassis of something else or is it just no, completely I, Australian made? Completely Australian made. So it is because everyone has to be different <laughs> Their point of difference is they've got this three three tiered nozzle system so Come up with it uh, and the augers auger it uh, Sorry, it happens to the box, right? Opens to the right and the organ underneath it fold up with it and then they auger the grain to the side. See the Australian made one tripper, boss or strip tiller. Yep. Looks uh, fairly Yeah, it's um it's a great machine. We've it's only new it's only this will be its second crop. Um, and no one else does this around or not around here, but certainly down towards Gundy Moore. Mm. But these guys have been making broad acre sprays, trailing broad acre sprays for a long time and just yeah, really huh. reliable, really tough. Uh, very simple saying it to some <laughs> is if you've got to manage weeds when you're planting a crop, you've got a farm system problem. I, I would agree. Um, you need to have the paddock clean before you worry about it. So. I mean, we'll get weeds, of course we will, but we do it. ...amalgamations with those companies. Oh, to be honest, I'm not sure I've really put a lot of thought process in it have have a really strong view on it, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, oh, I mean, it seems to be the way of the world at the moment. Supply yeah. channel, that's called a supply channel. Is it all... So it's all flood irrigation? Yes, siphon irrigation. Like we have uh, going here. That's... Massive. He... Really clever guy and I've always enjoyed 
um, engineering and manufacturing in the shed. fun stuff. Yeah, so that is, is there's that place in between us. Oh. Just down the road. Um, yeah, 12 metres. Uh, it's all, what, three metre control traffic, so the wheels are all located. So this is what you use for... So, we, so with that time, we'll plant wheat and chickpeas. I am on the road again. I am on my way north up to Emerald. Uh, so I'm driving through cattle country. And when I get a chance to pull over, I'll give you some, some shots of the scenery. It's actually quite green and beautiful right now. Uh, I think they're enjoying some of the rain that's happened over the last uh, maybe week or two. Uh, kind of rolling topography and lots of pasture uh, So it's as I said, it's quite nice. So once I get a chance to uh, pull over. I'll give you a, a view Just coming down into a valley and I figured I'd actually stop and show you what it looks like uh, It's been raining here the trees are in the way a little bit, but it's quite pretty So I'll see what I can grab for you I'm on this road here, it's called A5, uh, and as I said, I stopped to look out this beautiful scenery coming down the hill. I have to go this way, it's a little bit out of the way because uh, the road's flooded where I was supposed to go. I might backtrack a little bit because there's supposed to be an Isla Cliff lookout that they say is quite beautiful. So I got some time today, I'll probably just drive around a little bit as I get to Emerald, but uh, uh, I'm glad Australia is green. Uh, it, it's quite beautiful. Uh, the scenery through here in uh, Queensland. So I think I'll keep driving. So I found the lookout actually. It was on the, the direction I was going, which is kind of cool. But look, it's phenomenal. I'll try to get some better shots of it. So one thing uh, I do find interesting is it looked like a fire went through here at some point. I just don't know when. But a lot of the bark on the trees are burnt and the litter around the ground is burnt too. So, but now it rained and it's all green or greener. So I made it to the end of where I would guess this is what's called Isla's Point or Isla Point. Named after my niece maybe, who knows. But. It's beautiful if you can see the valley in behind me. I got footage in here about what it looks like way over that way. There's some green in the valley that I came from and the direction I am going, I'll show you some footage of it too, hopefully. But I'm going in that direction here where there's a valley right over here that's all pretty green, but uh, very beautiful scenery. I'm glad Tamara told me to stop here on the way. So grab some footage, much needed break after about three hours of driving, got about three hours to go. And uh, it's muggy, so I'm going to get back to the car after I walk along the ridge here and uh, get where it's cool, AC. So just a little break in the drive. <laughs> 